So what's next for Skyrim Special Edition? I made a video similar to this one yesterday, but for Fallout 4, just kind of evaluating what things are going on right now and what I think will be going on in the future. So today I'm going to do the same thing for Skyrim Special Edition, since I actually find it in a bit of a more peculiar or interesting kind of space and time zone right now. I think things are going to be changing very rapidly over the next few months. So where is Skyrim Special Edition right now? Well, it definitely feels like we are in kind of a divided community. I did make a video covering this a few days ago, and basically it feels like a a lot of PC users are now sticking to PC and a lot of Xbox users are only porting mods for Xbox users. This is very unfortunate. I do hope this gets resolved going forward. The only way it's going to get resolved is by mod authors kind of working together and really just the community coming together. I don't think there's like one big catalyst that will change everything. That's kind of odd to see this because even after release, it seemed like the community was very meshed and really just much more organic and nice to each other when you compare it to something like Fallout 4. At Fallout 4's release, the PC users and the Xbox users were going at it pretty openly, but for Skyrim, they were actually kind of all nice to each other. There was Xbox users just posting mass threads, kind of just thanking everyone for porting mods over. I also feel like porting is a huge part of this kind of quote unquote problem. A lot of mod authors did come to Skyrim, just port their mods over really quickly and kind of get in on the initial rush. They wanted to get a lot of downloads, which is totally understandable. Obviously that kind of shows to them that their hard work is paying off, but it seems like after that, we didn't really get too many new mods over this period, or at least too many new kind of high quality mods, some smaller mods, but a lot of the mods that we have been experiencing over these past few weeks or even months are actually again from old rim or just regular old skyrim and were ported over to skyrim se and of course two people new to the game kind of me included although i played skyrim in the past i didn't really do a ton of coverage before skyrim se and of course xbox users they have felt like totally new mods but to just regular old skyrim users that have been in the modding scene for very long nothing really changed we just had a bit of a newer game that looked a little bit different even that it seems like a lot of people are still holding out for skyrim special edition a lot of people are still playing skyrim with their old mod list because they can't move move over because some mods or some essential mods aren't ported over yet. Immersive weapons I know is a big one for a lot of people. It's pretty integral to a lot of save games and a lot of people just don't want to forego that. On top of that, a lot of people don't want to give up their save games. If you guys do know on the PC version, if you do have a save game in Skyrim, it can be transported over to Skyrim Special Edition. Obviously, if you don't have the right mods to do so, you can't really do it because, well, there's going to be massive holes where you otherwise had content. So what do I think is going to happen next? Well, obviously filling in of a lot of these gaps. One major thing that's not yet released that I think is really holding back the community right now is Skyrim Script Extender. That is a huge part of Skyrim modding, even more so than Fallout 4 modding or really modding for any other game. Skyrim has gotten to a point where it is very mature, it is very deep into the modding cycle and really the game's lifespan in general, so a lot of the dependencies for some different mods are on Skyrim Script Extender. It really allows you to do much more ambitious things with the game, and again, a lot of these mod authors have kind of covered all the basic things like weapons and armor, and some of the more crazy and intuitive mods are now requiring Skyrim Script Extender, which obviously is not available for Skyrim Special Edition. The one problem with that is I imagine as soon as Script Extender is released, a lot of mods will be made and ported over, but Script Extender is not available for Xbox One. So unfortunately, I feel like this divide we kind of see in the community right now is only going to be furthered over the next few months as Script Extender is released. In their last update video, they did kind of say that a March release date for a beta is probable. Regardless, with all that being said, I feel like now is also a time where we can kind of look back and reflect on a lot of these different mods, especially for console users out there. We had a ton of mods released in a very short period of time, and I feel like it almost made us take things for granted. A lot of these mods that are maybe aren't as high quality as some of the other mods are just totally overlooked, even though there is some great content there, simply because some of the big name mods were released at the same time. I feel like now would be a great time to kind of go through and look through some of the mods that were otherwise missed, and I actually do have a series that I'm going to go back and kind of just check out mods that I didn't cover previously because there were so many mods coming out at once. It seems like now we're slowly starting to transition into a period where Skyrim modding and mod releases are going to slow down at least a little bit, but not really. What's slowing down is the ports, because a lot of people have ported their mods over, and a lot of people that were porting their mods over in the initial rush have kind of gone or are doing something else now. This isn't a bad thing though, because what this means is a lot of mod authors have went back to working on new mods, new content for the game that's going to continue driving the modding community forward. I know I've gotten a lot of messages recently kind of saying, did Skyrim modding die? What's going on? Because there's just not as many releases as there were, but what really happened was there was an unrealistic expectation created by all these ports coming out at once. This is just normal. There isn't not many releases, it's just things slowed down a little bit due to it returning to a normal cycle and then as soon as things kind of get back in a normal flow and mod development and all that goes continue as it was otherwise doing, things will bounce back again and be pretty normal and standard similar to how Fallout 4 is. And on top of all that, I think over the long term, Skyrim does have a lot ahead of it. I also think now as we get into the kind of post Fallout 4 release cycle, like Fallout 4 was last year's big release, we're kind of curious as to what this year's big release is going to be. It's becoming more and more obvious that the Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be pretty far away. Doesn't 
doesn't seem like it's coming anytime soon. So what this means is a lot of mod authors are working on some large scale mods. Beyond Skyrim is one of the biggest achievements or undertakings for Skyrim and I'm definitely excited to see where that goes. All around, these are just my thoughts on what's going on with the Skyrim modding community. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going on? Just your opinions on the topic. If you guys did watch to this point in the video, let me know by commenting iPhone down below. As always, thank you for watching. Hopefully you're having a good Saturday and I hope to see you guys all next time. Later.